That's good. Good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting of the City of Lenore for Tuesday, October the 15th, 2019. We welcome you here. We are missing a couple of our council members tonight. Uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Willis is on and out, out of the state and on, on a trip. And so is Mr. Presswood, Council Member Presswood. He is out of town also. So we will do what we can without him. How about that? <laughs> We welcome you here this evening, and as we normally do, we will start with a moment of silence, and we will remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. If you will, join the council for a moment of silence. Thank you. We salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight we have a very busy evening of matters scheduled for public hearing, and we will start out with the first one, item A. This is an amendment for Appendix A, Article 4, Section 611 of the Code of Ordinances, zoning regulations that related to adult gaming establishments. We will hold this hearing to consider amending Appendix A, Article 4, Section 611, Performance Standards for Adult Gaming Establishments of the Adopted Ordinance as related to adult gaming establishments, providing for codification and an effective date. Note the purpose of this amendment is to reinsert lost text that was inadvertently deleted and related to the location standards for adult gaming establishments when City Council adopted a major overhaul to the zoning district and new standards for the City of Lenore in March of 2019. I will open the public hearing. And first I'll ask um, Mrs. Wheelock, Judy Wheelock, our planning director, if you want to address the council. Well, Actually, that was pretty much it. I mean, it's, it's 15 words that I accidentally left out of the ordinance that hasn't changed the intent at all. Um, you know, this is what this council adopted when we first started regulating them. So happy to answer any questions. Right. Okay. Anything, any questions from any of the council members concerning, just looks like it's basically a cleanup. Clean up. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Read seems like housekeeping. So, okay. Anyone that would like to address the council from the audience concerning uh, this uh, amendment? If not, I uh, will close the public hearing and turn it over to council for any action that they would like to take. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to accept the amendment as presented. Okay, we have a motion from council <coughs> member Stevens to uh, approve the motion, uh, the amendment as presented. Uh, as we had it presented to us with all the uh, appendix and articles and all that in there. If no other discussion, I'll call for the question. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. That carries unanimously. That is 5-0 tonight. Okay, we'll move on to item B. This is a contiguous annexation petition. This is for 1336 Connolly Springs Road uh, Southwest. This hearing will be held to consider this annexation per petition for the entirety of property located at 1336 Colony Springs Road and approval of an ordinance to extend the corporate limits of the City of Lenore, North Carolina to include the entire Cali Knight Brown property located at 1336 Colony Springs Road Southwest as recorded in Platte Book 303, page 307 in the Caldwell County Registry. There is a note, the front acre of the parcel is currently inside the city limits and the back 4.6 acres are in the ETJ, the extraterritorial jurisdiction. And the effective date of this would be October the 31st, if it is uh, passed. 
I will open the public hearing. If there's anyone who would like to address the council at this time, please do so. Ms. Wheelock, do you have anything you need to say before we do that? Well, I just wanted to make a note that the next public hearing on the Schedule 2 is related to this item. And the applicant is in the audience. The, the request is to annex the parcel and then assign B2 general business zoning to the entire acreage. Right now, it's one parcel that is partially in the city, partially in the ETJ, and there are two different zoning classifications. So typically, we wouldn't upzone a property and allow more intense development until it actually was brought into the city so that we could provide city services. So, right. Okay. I'm happy to answer any questions, and I know that applicants also in the audience. Okay. Any questions from council concerning this uh, contiguous annexation petition? or 1336 Conley Springs Road. Seeing no one, uh, is there anyone else who would like to address the council before we close the public hearing concerning this? Okay, seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and turn it over to council for any uh, motion or questions or whatever you might have. Um, given that it it does fit the consistency of our comprehensive plan and there's no opposition. I make a motion that be approved. I have a motion from Councilmember Purdue to approve the uh, annexation petition as presented. No other discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. Carries unanimously. All right, we'll move on then to item C. This is also concerning 1336 Colony Springs Road Southwood. This is for rezoning. This public hearing is held to consider rezoning the portion of 1336 Connolly Springs Road Southwest, North Carolina, PIN number 274882-3036, currently in the extraterritorial jurisdiction from RR, this low density single family, to B2 general business. The recommendation of the staff is approval based on the following consistency statement. The proposed zoning map Amendment is consistent with the adopted comprehensive plan because it provides an opportunity to correct a split zone parcel and facilitate straightforward zoning standards. The proposed amendment is reasonable and in the public interest because it will allow for commercial redevelopment in areas close to major transportation corridors. I will now open the public hearing. If there's anyone who would like to address the council, including our planning director. <laughs> I'll just make a quick note that the effective date for this rezoning should also be October 31st, October 31st. consistent okay. with the annexation. Thank you. And I will now open if there's anyone who would like to address the council concerning this rezoning. This is time that you can come forward. Okay, seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. I'll turn it over to the council for any discussion and or motion. Okay. Uh, okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Thomas makes a motion to approve the rezoning as presented um, for 1336 Colony Springs Road Southwest. No other discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. That carries unanimously. Okay. We'll move on then to item D. This is for. Uh, Old Mortgage and Road and Brushy Place belong to Roger and Deborah Coffey. This public hearing will be held to consider rezoning property located on the Old Mortgage and Road and Brushy Place, which is North Carolina PIN number 273-867-74351, North Carolina PIN number 273-865-0432, and 26 acres of North Carolina PIN number 273-86-79061, this is from R12 uh, and R15, that's medium and low density, um, single family to R20, which is low density single family. family. Uh, note uh, the uh, purpose of this rezoning is to facilitate a conditional use permit, CUP, for agricultural uses. Staff rec recommends approval based on the following consistency statement. All decisions of the planning board and city council should be based on the consistency of the proposal with a comprehensive plan and any other officially adopted plan that is ap applicable. 
while the comprehensive plan does not specifically discuss agriculture in the city, there is a guideline to adopt uh, sensible, straightforward zoning standards and procedures easily understood by the general public. There is also an environmentally conscious theme throughout the plan for any new and existing development through protecting Rob. Riparian, thank you. <laughs> Riparian areas and adding uh, BMPs, which is best management practices for water quality when possible. The proposed development meets these guidelines by correcting a zoning map error, as well as creating functional BMP, best management practices that helps to improve water quality in Lower Creek. Okay. And I will now open the public hearing. Uh, for any dis and discussion, anything. This is we lock. So I have the project planners in the audience as well as the applicant. Um, this is really a map cleanup. R20 is really m more appropriate to have. This is an agriculture use that is in the city limits with a couple of different zoning classifications. So this cleans it up more under one. There's some land that is currently zoned industrial that we're not going to mess with because industrial would also allow for the agriculture use. So I think the details we'll discuss when we get to the quasi-judicial hearing for the CUP. Okay. Any questions of, of um, Ms. Wheelock? Now, again, is there anyone who would like to address the council concerning this particular uh, rezoning? Yeah, I, I, guess I guess I could. Yeah, you know, what it is, we've been farming this for quite some time. Would you and, do one thing first? Will you give me your name and address? Uh, I'm Roger Coffee. Okay. With Roger Coffee and Signs. And, okay. And my address is, my business address is 5016 Valley View Circle, Venor, North Carolina. Okay. And uh, we, we've been farming this for quite a while, and we were approached with the uh, soil and water people about putting in this, it's a chemical mixing facility to keep the water cleaner and they were helping fund this and they wanted us to do this because Lower Creek ha has has need for this right so this is why we when we started when we were starting this I didn't realize we needed to come through the city the county didn't let us know that so but it's all to help keep the waters cleaner and to make a cleaner facility okay. keep things better Okay. Thank you, Mr. Coffee. Any questions from Mr. Coffee while he's here? <coughs> I'm sorry. No okay. questions. No, no questions. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to address the council concerning this uh, rezoning? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing, and I will turn it over to City Council for any uh, discussion and or action. I make a motion that we accept item D as presented. I have a motion from... Councilmember Beal, that we uh, approve the um, rezoning uh, property as presented at this time. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you very much. All right, we'll move into item E. This is a conditional use permit. Um, I'm going to read this first. Um, Old Morgan Road in Brushy Place. This is a quasi-judicial public hearing will be held to consider a conditional use permit for property located on Old Morganton Road and Brushy Place as submitted by Roger and Deborah Coffey for the expansion of the established agricultural use and a construction of an 18-foot by 24-foot agricultural chemical handling facility and tree farm with the following conditions. Number one, the conditional use permit is for a tree and scrub uh, farm agricultural use and associated activities. Animals are not permitted except in accordance with the standards of Chapter 3 of the Lenore Code of Ordinances. If the agricultural use or agrochemical facility has not been established within 24 months of the adoption of the conditional use permit, the approval shall be considered null and void. Item 3 is a 30-foot setback will be required along the street side property lines and property lines adjacent to the single family residential properties. Item four, all development standards of the R20 and I1 districts shall apply to new buildings and uses within the respective areas of each zone of this property. And number five, all lighting shall be fully cut off and shielded 
as to eliminate, minimize light spillover onto adjacent residential properties. I'm going to call on our city attorney, Mr. Roar, to tell, talk to us a little about the quasi-judicial conditional use permit procedure. And I brought, I brought up the uh, discussing with the council conditional use permits several months ago, but then it was scheduled for last month and I had a court hearing, so I wasn't able to make it. Um, as I understand it, and it doesn't look like this will be a particularly contested conditional use permit hearing, quasi-judicial, but I think it's still important to discuss the parameters of what we need of how a, a uh, quasi-judicial hearing is to be conducted and give each of you a chance to establish a couple of things on the record. So <clears throat> generally the decisions this, this body makes are legislative decisions, just like the ones we've already had where Folks can basically say if there were people in opposition uh, uh, to some of the other things, they can basically say anything they want to. They say, oh, it'll hurt my property values or whatever it may be. Um, you have, this body has already made the legislative decision that if property is zoned, in this case, R20 or I1, if it meets certain standards, then agricultural use can be made of the property. And if they meet those requirements of the conditional use permit, they are entitled to receive it to entitled to be able to make that developmental use of the property. And so it's quasi-judicial in that you actually have to hear sworn evidence. Again, if this were a more contested proceeding, there would be opportunities for experts to testify about whether the use is harmful or dangerous in some way, and there could be objections to evidence and rulings on evidence about whether it's admissible or not. In fact, um, when, I, when I stepped in for Mr. Lackey and the county commissioners, we actually had a fairly contested hearing, at least for the first part of it, regarding a cell tower. And each side was basically designated someone who acted as sort of the attorney for the parties, and there were objections to evidence, and I ruled some evidence out of order and that sort of thing. It doesn't look like that's gonna be necessary here, but just be aware that that's, Moving forward, I, when I talk to you about this next week, that's what, I, what I'm going to be recommending. And I think, ultimately, it can make the process, while making it more formal, it'll actually make it simpler for you because instead of having people basically get up, as they often do at these hearings, and say, well, it's going to be bad for the neighborhood, it's going to hurt my property values, unless there's an expert that can actually establish that, they don't get to say it. And in fact, that's one of the things I'll be discussing with Ms. Wheelock in terms of when we have conditional use permit hearings in the future, <coughs> sending out letters that advise the people, hey, this isn't the usual public hearing we're going to be having. If you're going to be speaking in opposition, you better have someone there that knows what they're talking about and actually has training or experience that gives them the ability to offer an expert opinion. Again, not really necessary in this case, it appears. But it is important that each of you establish on the record um, because it's a quasi-judicial hearing and you're acting somewhat as judges in this case, it's, it's, you need to make clear that you don't have a fixed opinion about the, the matter. That is, you've decided that we're not having agricultural in this city no matter what. I don't care what happens. That would be inappropriate for you to take that position uh, because, again, you've established that this body has established that if they meet the requirements, they can do so, uh, that you don't have a direct financial interest in the outcome of this, that you haven't had any ex parte communications, you know, no one's come up to you and said, hey, you know that agricultural hearing you're gonna be next week, I hope you'll vote against it because of this, this, and that. That would be a legislative thing, someone coming up and talking, talking to you about an issue which they can do, but when you're sitting as a judge, you wouldn't want a judge in your case having, no, you wouldn't want that judge, the other party having talked to them, telling them to rule against, uh, ruling against you, so you can, and the other thing is, if you know any of the parties and have a close relationship with the parties, it would be important that you disclose that. Again, it doesn't appear to be a big issue, and I'm probably spending more time talking about this than the hearing's going to take. But no, it it's is, still important to put it that is on good the record. That we need yeah. to have, and we certainly have talked about we're going to go a little more in depth in this with our committee to hold right. meeting. Uh, so I guess mainly the, that introduction was mainly to give each of you an opportunity to establish if you have a rela close relationship with any of the parties, have had, if anyone has contacted you about it, if you've gone out to the property, and if you have any sort of financial interest in the outcome. So if you do, mention it now. If you don't, we can assume you don't. Yeah. Mr. Bale. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, um, I do know the applicants in this particular case. Um, but we have no financial ties. We are not particularly close, uh, but I just want to disclose that before we go forward. Okay. And I don't think that would rule him out of considering okay. it. Can we ask Anyone else have any? Can if you have any questions, you can ask me any questions you want. Sure, yeah, that's what I'm here for. Yes, you can. You, you indicated that a letter would be sent out by Ms. Wheelock indicating 
the entry point is to have a representative here sort of as a professional person to speak on their behalf. But what if a person or family ignores the letters, which most of the time they do, and attend this meeting? How would we know? What would we do to say to them, hey, look, do you have a rep or what do we do there? Well, uh, this is, I'll tell you what the county commissioners, uh, their policy generally is. It's to make the lawyer the bad guy. <laughs> and that's basically how it went at the, at the hearing on the, on the cell tower. Basically, the, the uh, chair of the county commissioners termed conducting the hearing over to me. And I basically, although the, bo the county commissioners actually voted on the permit, I acted as the judge in terms of ruling evidence, uh, uh, whether it's admissible or not. There was, there was a woman who was dead set against the cell tower, and she had reasons that she wanted to give. And basically, you know, sometimes the, the attorney for the applicant would, would say objection to what she was saying, and I'd say, ma'am, I'm sorry you can't okay. say that. You know, nicer than a judge would in court. The judge would simply say, objection sustained, ma'am, you can't answer that. And other times she kind of went on a little bit and we let her go, but when she was finished, I would turn to the county commissioners and say, you just need to understand, you can't consider any of that. It's inadmissible, it's irrelevant, and you're not allowed to consider it. Because when it comes to whether someone meets the standards or not and whether there's a danger to the public, you can't just stand up and say, I think this is going to hurt my property values. There has to be someone that will stand up and say, for example, in an agricultural case, they could stand up and say, as a result of this, yeah. There might be some danger to the to the groundwater, although it seems like oh, it, that's right. exactly the opposite in this case. Although we shouldn't really know that at this point, right. uh, but <laughs> uh, someone with training and experience would have to stand up and say, "This is the reasons why you should turn down the permit. Oh, okay. This is the reasons why it's unsafe or un dangerous in some way." And so, uh, if in the future we conducted it that way and we had a contested hearing. Presumably, uh, Mr. Gibbons would turn it over to me. Someone would start trying to talk about why they're opposed to it, but they're just a neighbor and they don't have a particular reason why other than they just don't like it. And I would say, well, ma'am, you're out of order. We, this body can't consider that evidence. Okay. And that's certainly the way we will look at it. We will discuss this at our committee, the whole meeting, yeah. how, to, how our procedures will be set up to yeah. Again, doesn't appear to be the situation here, but you know, you understand the, uh, my recommendations as to how the policy would be conducted going forward. Thank you, sir. We appreciate that very much. Thank you, Beverly. Now, uh, the public hearing. Well, I will open the public hearing. If there's anyone who would like to address the council concerning this, you have to be sworn in if you do address the uh, the guest because of the quasi judicial. I was a priest. He won't swear in, uh, our planning director. It just reminds me of the dinner table. <laughs> That's how that rolls. <laughs> you go ahead and do that. Just for the record. Yeah. He still does it. He still does it every time he has a meal. He's got top bass on. Okay, go ahead. All right, you've got a staff report in your packets that I'll submit for the record. Um, within the staff report, staff has drafted findings of fact for meeting uh, the, the eight standards of approval. The conditional use permit is for agricultural uses, specifically the expansion of agricultural uses onto a parcel that's never been used that way before, or the construction of an agrochemical mixing facility. Now in your packet there is a letter from the person at Soil and Water that's been coordinating with Mr. Coffee. Now she is not in attendance. so That's all right. It, but um, this this is actually the result of, of grant money that was designed to uh, help water quality. So instead of mixing the chemicals near the stream or where they could spill on the ground and get washed into the water, they'll be mixed on this um, within this facility, which is pretty much like a, a shed. And there's a cement floor with the drain so that it can all be captured. So uh, Lower Creek is one of those water bodies within the city that we have some water quality issues. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot about stormwater and the Clean Water Act and coming to compliance with that. This is sort of on the proactive side of, of what uh, is available to help agricultural uses. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions. And I think Mr. Coffey can also. I have a, uh, a question, and I, maybe our attorney can further expand or you. And it's not a problem, 
but I just wonder if the wording should not be changed in number two, because in, in number two references number one, it says the conditional use permit is for a tree and shrub farm use and associated activities. You go down to item two, if the agricultural use or agricultural agrochemical facility has not been established, should that not read and, because it's conditioned upon the... Well, you so... See my, you see my point? We're, we're basing this decision on two things happening, and if you read number two, you could read that if you do one or the other, or if you don't do one or the other. Well, it's my understanding that the intent of it is to do an, for, for it to be agricultural yeah. and an agrochemical facility, both at the same time. Is that right? Right. And honestly, I mean, this is a standard condition that we always recommend okay. just in case we need something to claw back later. But this is an existing agricultural okay. use. Okay, and that's to and be continued. when uh, Mr. Coffey went to get his permits to build this building, he was incorrectly told by Caldwell County Building Inspections that he did not need a permit because it was a bona fide farm, which bona fide farm exemptions do not apply in the city limits. So the structure is actually mostly existing already. Okay. So I don't really anticipate I a just scenario didn't want the where... Or to get us in yeah. a, in a, in trouble. It's it sounds awkward. like factually it's not going to matter at all okay. because basically they're just continuing a, uh, something that they've okay. at least, it's going to be an offshoot of what they're already doing. Yeah. Okay. But I think, I think or is okay there because basically as long as they do one or the other, they've done what they're supposed to do within 24 months. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. That's why we had or, but <laughs> I, just, I didn't want it to come back and catch us. And yeah. Thank you. I don't have any questions other than that. Any other questions for me in the council with Ms. Wheelock? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, what it is, we, we have been farming this property since the 1980s, and it's early 80s. And uh, we, we, do, we, we mix and do our sprays at night because our chemical, the people that's over the government says we have less drift, and you have everything comes down, and we use less chemical. It's very much safer at night. So at nighttime, we need this facility with the lights because it'll be better for, safer for mixing and no speed. And the thing is, it's away from the stream. It'll be a whole lot cleaner on the environment for that. And uh, and we actually, the horticulture industry can't buy a lot of stuff that you use on food. We can't. We're restricted more than any grain farmer. And we we don't get to use the strong stuff. It's very when we when we use when we use materials usually it's 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 got to be labeled for horticulture. And it's not as strong as your grain, the food you're eating uses. It's not as strong. So, in the whole deal is, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. if we use this at night, we use less. It takes less, okay. and it's coming down. And your insects are eating at night, so we use less. It, it don't take as much, and it's a lot better for the environment. So, you know, we we just want to do this cleaner. And and this stream, they they're trying to watch this stream, and it's it's the only one left in the area that's that's got these protections so you know so they approached us about doing this and i said well yeah it's a cost share deal it'll cost me some it'll cost them some but it's it's to help keep little creek cleaner that's what it's all about Good. so thank you for your time thank you all thank you anyone have any questions for mr coffee concerning <laughs> well, I'm sorry. no no you're good you're fine. you're fine okay thank you sir we appreciate it thank you Appreciate what you what you're working on, trying to do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone else would like to address the council at this time while we're in the uh, public hearing? If not, I will close the public hearing. Turn it over to the council for any discussion and or motion. And let me just suggest, yes, if sir. someone does make a motion to approve, it should include adopting the proposed findings of fact and conclusions that the the staff has made, because ultimately, if and again, if we get into a contested one, if someone were to appeal a ruling of this body, you would have to have it in the form of findings of fact, conclusions of law, and an order that a superior court judge could review. You, okay. It's not just enough to say it's approved. You actually have to find out, you have to make determinations about why it's been approved. And that's what the proposed findings of fact and conclusions would do. Okay, counsel, you understand that part of the, will be part of the motion. And in accordance with that, I would like to make a motion to approve this conditional use permit along with the findings of fact that staff has provided uh, in, in supporting such a decision. So I make that motion. 
heard the motion from Councilmember Purdue to uh, uh, recommend the uh, uh, conditional use permit and all the findings of fact that go with that. And we make sure we get all that for you in your, in your motion. Uh, so anyway, you hear the motion. Uh, is there any other discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. That carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have one more um, um, item for public hearing tonight, and that's item F, residential parking code amendment. Uh, of course, this is for the city of Lenore. This hearing will consider approval of an ordinance amending Appendix A, Section 1000.9 of the Lenore Zoning Code related to parking regu regulations for multifamily residential uses in the city of Lenore. I will open the public hearing and recognize our planning director, Mrs. Wheelock. It's planning night. Planning That's run. <laughs> um, so this ordinance is really the, the last one in a series of ordinances that I've been taking to this body over the past couple of years to try to make um, our regulations easier to um, do infill development. So this is related to multifamily uses and it's one of the last remaining pieces you know we adopted the code overhaul and we legalized a lot of different types of multifamily residential uses to try to promote infill opportunities but what we didn't change in that ordinance was anything having to do with the parking code the current parking code if you're going to put in a little studio apartment it still requires you to put two parking spaces well parking spaces are expensive to build and land intensive and so if somebody chooses to build extra parking because they feel that there it would be needed you know these are studios but they're being rented to couples or something they could absolutely still continue to provide more but it just seems silly for our code to actually make a requirement above and beyond what's logically necessary so um, in your packets there is a comparison of a lot of surrounding municipalities this change would put us probably on the side of being more progressive there's different ways to do it um, but I think this is a, a pretty modest proposal that would still require adequate parking for a town like ours where we don't have public transit and it can be expected that people will have cars. Um, but essentially you would provide less parking for studios and one bedrooms and, <coughs> and then more parking for, for two and three bedrooms. Um, the other thing, it allows for some level of trade-off if you were to pro provide bicycle parking or motorcycle parking. Um, and that is a way for certain developments, especially larger developments that have a lot of parking, if they provided some motorcycle spaces or bicycle spaces, which is supported in, in the bike plan and something the, the planning board wanted to put in, that it allows for a little bit of a trade-off there. Um, not to the extent where you could provide all motorcycle parking instead of vehicle parking, but it was a comment made by the planning board that you know you 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 pull up and you see one motorcycle in a in a giant parking space and nobody's really providing those parking opportunities so happy to answer questions about the ordinance i think this is um in line with the the philosophy that we've been making changes to the zoning code any questions concern yes sir <clears throat> so we we're not requiring uh, builders to have more than say in this proposal more than two spaces for a three bedroom um, but knowing how families tend to grow when they have that third car they wind up on the street parked on a street that's going to become a, a traffic issue so is this do you feel like this number is going to like in a large complex like we're getting ready to have one built is this number going to keep us in a position where we're not going to have a lot of overage parking, people parking on streets and things like that? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty confident that this is more than enough parking for the larger complexes. The way the math starts working out over averages, you're going to have some two bedroom units that only have one vehicle. And so if you do have a handful of units that have more vehicles than that, 
It also gives the flexibility for those property managers to either assign parking spaces to units or allow for free parking. You know, a lot of times the big complexes will go ahead and, and provide also guest parking opportunities. None of this would give permission for people to park on a street where it wasn't, you know, able to be parked on, you know, so the, the police could still enforce your know, clear passage of our travel lanes. But in general, parking lots are underutilized. Um, almost always there are plenty of extra spaces available for the, from what I've observed from the, the places that have been built with the current code. I talked to some developers and they would they would build less if we would let them. So this is actually a, a fairly moderate proposal. Okay, thank you. Yeah. This is only for the multifamily. This only changes so. multifamily, yeah. So um, wow. we actually don't have any real solid parking requirements. I mean, if you're a single family wow. home, you know, typically you're building your, your one single family home. And um, if there was any kind of planned development or townhome project or something, we would still be applying these kind of standards to, to the development as a whole, if it had surface parking. Any other questions? I'm, I'm guess I'm thinking the homes, uh, existing homes that are being restructured. Then you would identify those through the permit process if they're changing them into to multi-family units, like a home that's like the conversion to a conversion. quadplex or something. Yeah, they may not be identified as such. But if they do the permits, then you'd be able to know that it's changed. Correct. We we would review that, yeah. and um, and I don't have it in front of me, but if my memory serves me correctly, there was one footnote that addressed a little bit of that conversion of an existing single family house and if it, it's if it's really minimal i believe there was there was a parking standard included in that in in the other section so this would really be more for those true, true. apartment developments like we approved a, a duplex in the Kentwood area mm -hmm. back several months ago it might have been a year ago it's been That's, a while Mm -hmm. I and I think we required some additional off-street parking for that. And so, of course, any conditional use, you can always put additional conditions if they're related to meeting one of those findings of fact. Your favorite thing. Any other questions concerning this residential parking code amendment? not we're still in the public hearing is anyone else who would like to address the council about this issue no one's left seeing no one i will close the public hearing turn it over to the council for any uh, action or any other comments or questions don't anybody no question no, I have no, no questions, questions. No. I make a motion we approve the code amendment as Jenny has presented to us. I have a motion from Councilmember Purdue to uh, approve the residential parking code amendment as presented uh, for section 1000.9 of the Lenore Zoning Code. No other comments. Then we'll call for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Busy night. Thank you. Did well. <laughs> All right, we'll move on then. That was our last item for um, public hearing. We'll move on to our consent agenda items, which are consist of minutes of our city council meeting of Tuesday, October 1st, 2019, and minutes from the closed session uh, of Tuesday, October 1st, 2019, as these were reviewed by the city attorney, the city council, and the city manager. I'll open the uh, consent agenda items for any discussion and or motions. Make a motion to approve consent <clears throat> agenda items A and B as presented. I have a motion from Council Member Thomas to approve the consent agenda items A and B, the minutes as presented. No other questions. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll move on. It's time for any requests and petitions of any of our any <coughs> citizens. Anyone, almost everybody here, our staff, you guys have anything you welcome to bring up? Virginia, would you like to say anything? Good. <laughs> glad, glad to have you with us. She'll let you read about it. Well, you, I get to read about it. Yeah, thank you. All right. If no one is here to address, then we'll move on. We don't have any reports of our board's 
and commissions this evening. So we'll move on to report and recommendations of the city manager, Mr. Elderbrand. Uh, Mayor Council, some items for your information this evening. The uh, annual Smoking in the Foothills Barbecue Festival will be held on Friday, October 18th, beginning at 5 p.m. in downtown Lenore. It goes to 10.30 at night. Then on Saturday, October 19th, it begins at 10 a.m. and runs to 10.30 at night. Um, and I want to say, I think Saturday's when uh, Jim Quick and Coastlined, is that correct? Yes. Saturday ends at 9. Saturday ends at 9. Okay. Uh, the Committee of the Whole will meet on Tuesday, October 22nd, 8.30 a.m., 3rd Floor City Hall. Uh, the Planning Board will meet on Monday, October 28th, 5.30, and that will be in these chambers. The uh, Foothills Regional Airport Authority will meet on Wednesday, October 30th at the airport at noon. The annual Pumpkin Patch Parade will be held on Thursday, October 31st, 3 o'clock downtown Lenore and run to 6 p.m. The uh, annual Halloween Carnival will be held on Thursday, October 31st at Martin Luther King Center, and that begins at 5.30 and goes to 8 p.m. Uh, the City Council meeting for Tuesday, November 5th, has been canceled due to the election that day. Uh, City Council will conduct one meeting in November, and that will be held on Tuesday, November 12th at 6 p.m. in these chambers. The annual Light Up Lenore event is scheduled for Thursday, November 21st from 4 to 6 in downtown Lenore. And the annual uh, light show begins on Thursday, November 21st, runs through Wednesday, January 1st, uh, 6 to 10 p.m. at night in downtown Lenore. And also, Ms. Thomas, do you want to mention the uh, turkey, 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 yeah, turkey drive? Right so I'll have a flyer out on it, but the uh, the sixth annual Turkey Tuesday will be uh, November the 26th. It's always the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Um, we um, are looking forward to having a very good turnout this year. Hopefully we'll get the fire police department, all departments to participate and get the word out and have some fun. Um, and we're probably going to uh, discuss with Council Member Perkins it's starting it right at 5 versus 6 o'clock. Um, but there's more to come on that so we can get the traffic flowing. Um, and we're expecting to have a, a great opportunity to give back. So hopefully the council members can participate. But the flyers will be going out tomorrow. And we'll get that added to the bulletin so we can start communicating. And the date was? The, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Tuesday before yep. Thanksgiving. Okay. And we'll start at 5 26. instead of 6. Will that be a council meeting night? Should no. not be. That's no, the end of the month. month. Should be yeah, committee whole, which the way it falls this time, that helps. Because right. sometimes it ends up being a council meeting date. And then that's the 26. you may have to be at the whole that morning. Yeah. So shouldn't have that conflict. But more to come on that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate always doing that. I know it's a great, uh, valuable asset for our community. Absolutely. A lot of people uh, they uh, come out. get something out of that. Yes. Hang on one second. Yes. Caldwell Rotary Christmas Tree Festival is November 23rd. Okay, we will have that. Certainly, we already have it on the calendar. I know. Okay, tonight we have four items for your uh, action. Uh, the first one is a bid award for the Biosolids Project. We've talked about that for at least two years plus. But uh, the city received bids on Thursday, October 3rd. We received six bids and one no bid. Uh, the lowest responsive bidder was Brushy Mountain Builders, an amount of four million. $259,000, um, and you have those uh, bid tabs in your, your packet. Uh, staff further recommends that we establish a construction contingency for this project of 4.5% or $192,000 um, due to the amount of unknowns we have with a facility this age. Um, also, we would recommend that you authorize uh, me to go back and have the authority to execute the necessary change orders associated with the project as long as I report back to council, and um, with that, um, I would recommend we award to Brushy Mountain Builders. Uh, okay. Mr. Mayor, yes, Mr. Sir. City Attorney, um, the company I work for is affiliated financially with the owners of Brushy Mountain Builders, so I would ask that I be recused from item one and item two of this. Um, two, two, you should be okay. Two, I should be okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could be recused then from item one on this uh, council action. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make, make a motion to recuse Councilman Purdue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Voting on item one. We have a motion to uh, recuse Council Member Purdue from voting on this bid award for the biosolids project as presented. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for bringing that to our attention. You heard the uh, recommendation from the city manager for this bid award in the amount of $4,259,000. This would be to Brushy Mountain Builders. Um, 
and it'll contention upon all the things in, that are listed here uh, for the uh, Boar Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant Biosolids Improvements Project. This is the recommendation. In addition, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve that recommendation. We have a motion from Councilmember Stevens to approve the uh, recommendation. Uh, bid awards as presented. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. Carries unanimously. Four zero. With my exception. Without. Well, that's right. Four zero. Four zero. Without. Including Mr. <clears throat> Purdue. Okay. The next item. The next item you have tonight is a, um, a request for additional funds for this project. Is um, mentioned. After you awarded the bid, our estimates for this project now exceed, uh, where it did exceed $7 million, but through some work with the engineer, we've got that down a, a little bit down to $6,995,000. As you're aware, we received a, a loan, a low interest loan from the state of North Carolina for $6.6 million. Uh, we spoke to the state about this project and being that it's less than 5% uh, over what our estimate was, they have agreed to go back and loan us an additional $395,000. Um, with that amount, and the term will say the same, and interest rate is 1.53%. Uh, so the total loan amount now from the state would be 6995 And we'd recommend uh, that you approve that loan amount, and we have the contracts ready to sign. Okay. If you have questions, I'm here, and also Radford Thomas is in the back. You heard the request from the city manager and for the uh, additional funding for the biosolids project. Everything seems to be in place for that from the revolving uh, fund program, SRP. Uh, so anyway, I'll open it to you for any discussion and or motion, please. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we accept the additional fund for the biosolid project. I have a motion from Council Member Perkins to, uh, to approve this additional funding for the biosolids project as presented. No other discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. And that is five of Mr. Purdue was voting here. Okay. The next item you have in your packet is an award of um, a bid for restrooms at Optimus Park. Uh, staff received three bids <coughs> for restrooms. The low bidder uh, was uh, Siegel electrical service. electrical service, but they're also a construction company. I had that question uh, yesterday about electrical. They do, do have construction license as well uh, for that. And they're the low bidder at 31250 but again, we received three bids, and um, this is part of the Part F grant, and hopefully we'll get that concluded here in the next uh, 60 or 90 days. All right, you heard the recommendation of the city manager for a uh, bid award for the restrooms at the Optimus Park. It is part of the Part of grant that we are receiving. Uh, this would be to build uh, the new restrooms uh, at this facility in the amount of $31,250. This is to Siegel's Electrical Services Incorporated. I hear a motion to approve this. Make a motion to approve. Motion from Council Member Thomas to approve the uh, bid award as presented. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you very much. And the last item we have tonight for your decision will be the 2019 roof replacement bids. Uh, the city received bids for the replacement of roofs at four facilities. They include the public works, public utilities, uh, headquarters. Uh, the water treatment plant, <coughs> fire station number two, as well as the police department. The city received two bids and one uh, no bid. The lowest response bidder on that project was Barger Ash Roofing for $158,000, and we'd recommend you award the contract to uh, Barger Ash. Okay, you heard the recommendation of the staff, uh, city manager and staff, concerning the uh, bids for roofing. Uh, to these facilities as listed in the amount of $158,000 to Barger Ash Roofing Company. Uh, that's for four city facility uh, uh, locations. Any uh, discussion on that? And I would mention Jared Wright's in the back if you have technical questions regarding that uh, process. you like to have a dry office? <laughs> okay. Chief, you're not getting wet at are you? Anywhere? You guys are not getting wet, are you? <laughs> Good. Depends on which way the wind's blowing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The fire department's recycling water. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. Mayor, Mayor, I'll entertain I'd a motion. Like, yes, I'd sir. like to make a motion to accept the um, bid as received from Barger Ash Roofing Company for the replacement of four roofs. We have a, a motion from Council Member Stevens to uh, accept the uh, bid from uh, Barger Ash Roofing for the roof replacements as presented. No other discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. All opposed. Did everybody vote? Did everybody vote? <laughs> That's it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you, Mr. Hildebrand. Uh, we would mention you have it at the podium in front of you. The uh, you're all invited to be a part of the pig and a paddle boat fish fry as part of the barbecue festival. It's not barbecue; it's a fish, fish fry. Fish in a boat. Uh, this is on uh, Friday at uh, lunchtime, seven, seven o'clock. I think I'm looking on it, trying to find it's it. Late here. lunch. Yeah. Seven <laughs> it's a uh, it's a it's a dinner. <laughs> For that, so anyway, it's for the it's a for the council and, and members of our staff and things. It's barbecue, cook team social and VIP reception. So you get to meet a lot of the teams that are here and all the people that are involved. Our people who are helping sponsor the smoking in the foothills. So I hope you can come out for that. I think you're supposed to RSVP, so please do that when you when you can. So. And look forward to seeing everybody come out for the weekend for the smoking in the foothills. Uh -huh. This is actually the fifth. One and uh, things have been moving very well. We hope to have a great turnout for it, and a lot of things happening this weekend. We know that, uh, but anyway, we'll we'll enjoy. It's supposed to be great weather, cool. So we hope it'll be a good good time for everyone coming out to that. All right, we'll move on then to uh, recommendation of our city attorney, Mr. Rohr. Thank you for your recommendations and talk tonight. So, Keeping us straight on that. Uh, I have nothing else. Okay, thank you, sir. And I only have one item quickly. The uh, I do have uh, a rec recreation director, uh, board of directors seat. It will be uh, term expiring. Mr. Scott Barnett. I will be contacting him to uh, uh, see if he would like to continue serving on that and that kind of thing. I just want to go ahead and bring it to your attention because uh, we always go a couple meetings to make sure that we have that. So. Uh, we will discuss that at our next meeting uh, a couple weeks down the road, and I'll have a chance to talk with him about that and Mr. Story, who uh, oversees that board on that. So hope, I'm sure he's doing a good job. I have uh, been to several meetings, and he always has been very and much involved in our recreation board. Anything from any of our council members tonight? All right. Then we don't have anything coming from closed session. All right. If nothing else to come before us, we stand adjourned. <laughs>